Okay, welcome back to the final episode of this little mini series. And we're going to look at the very final routing that we came up with and how we came to that decision. Now, you may recall from last episode, there are a couple of holes that were causing us problems. 15 is placeholder, 5 is awkward, 6 is there, but, but to be honest, 6 can be anywhere, that's fine. It's just a long par 3. Um, and additionally, we'd broken up some of the better holes I felt on this course with 14 and 16, um, and I, I wasn't totally sold on those. 9 was all right, um, and we could build out... Um, but it's still very much a connector hole that I don't know if I really loved. So the first thing I tried to do with this version of the routing, I looked for ideas for 15 and quickly realised I was just going to have to manufacture something. There wasn't a short four, I think you really need land movement or a really good strategic hole. Um, it was going to have to be strategic because the land movement, there's a little roll off here, there's a little dip here, um, and a gentle camber this way. But we've got a lot of camber elsewhere on the course. I don't think that's anything particularly new. How is this one going to be able to hold up alongside all the others? Now, again, it's a contest course. So you really want to make everything as good as possible. And this one's not filling me with a huge amount of excitement in the way that some of the rest of them really are. Um, additionally, I got further down building one. And we'd said that we were going to have a range in here. And the more I started building one or continuing to tinker with the planting that I had, I was just going, there's some really good land here and all you're going to be able to see is either a wall of trees, which ruins the kind of, I'm hoping for a relatively open feel up here but, and like big views across the course so that you can see lots of holes at once. There's no point in having a tight routing if we're going to block it all off, at least for the look I'm going for. So I kind of want, I kept coming back and going, can we put holes in here? What I hated was this diet, like parallel groups of trees. So what I did first of all was cleared out some of them and gave myself some to work around. And actually that made a big difference because I did build out nine as well. I built a hole um, based around a mound in front of the green, like classic kind of leaven sort of template if you followed that series. And I just didn't like it. It was just getting up the hill. It was still a bit average. The green was, it was a fine hole, like, but it wasn't doing much for me. And I just couldn't get away from or shake the feeling that I was wasting some of this land and some of the big views that we had. Additionally, um, I'd originally planned on having a little halfway hut here and deleted those because we didn't need those anymore because we're no longer bringing nine and 10 in here. Because originally, you remember, 9 was going down here, 10 was coming back up. But in removing some of these, one of the things I did find was, actually, if I'm looking at this from 1, I would love to have a green somewhere here. Or maybe a little bit further back, even. We'll see. And I thought, well, you know what? The original idea wasn't bad. We can still have a hole going up here. It just doesn't need to be as long, because this one that was coming uphill was a real slog this kind of 450 odd yarder it was going up to here somewhere and it just didn't work but a shorter hole going uphill could could work quite interestingly and we could get a view over 10 that might be quite nice so what i ended up finding was the problem i'd had was that i was just going with this hole straight uphill on a long hole which was always going to feel like a slog and this one was kind of going just straight across the side hill Going at it more of a diagonal made this really work. So one of the things I did then was took these little clusters of trees and just moved them a bit. And suddenly I started to see, well, you've got this cool landform here and we could work it around these trees and then suddenly you get this view into this green. I was also thinking, what sort of green do I not have yet? Well, I really love putting a punch bowl sort of green complex on courses. And I don't have one of those yet, but this area could work really nicely for that. Playing into a little kind of denser treed part of the property. So the green could feel more on its own, but you would see it from one. I thought that could be quite fun. It fits the length of approach that maybe we want. And when I kind of pulled this back and went, you know what, actually, there's a tee shot here that I can make work where you're kind of carrying the corner. What if we put like 
something on the corner and then you're trying to get over this maybe it's a mound whatever it is then you turn round we don't have that many tight dog legs either where you're turning quite significantly and I quite liked having the trees in there and going well most of these holes you're seeing the entirety of the hole off the tee which I like but also there's something quite nice about going up here and then you come round and then ah oh, that's where we're going I think that could work quite nicely for some variety so suddenly I felt that this would then also allow for a bit more space for 12 so 12 can potentially dog leg which gives more space for eight um, we can play with where 12 tee goes because that can move quite a, quite a significant amount but with all of this I wasn't sold on nine and that took us down to here and worked quite nicely well additionally if you remember I really wasn't sold on 15 I had nothing whatsoever so we can now bring this back though and go well 15 can work back to here and provided I work that green versus T carefully so that might mean putting some bunkers in front of it but it's short enough that no one should get hit by it be careful with our waypoints I think this works so you play to that green come back you walk up this way you play from that T slightly shorter bear in mind this hole was originally 327 like we can afford to lengthen that touch and as long as we're being careful with some of these trees and how we work up to here now if we can find a decent-ish green site up here, I actually think this works. So that then became our new tenth hole. So we've now gone nine, ten, and I think this was an inter more interesting way of using that land. It also broke up that parallel sequence of holes. Granted, ten is now parallel to one, but it's on a slightly different line. So going more south than well, slightly different line. But I think they're going to play very differently because we've got two short holes going in opposite directions, which I think will balance out quite nicely. If one's into the wind, one will play downwind, and crosswinds will affect them both. But we also now have a long par four on the front nine, um, which was originally what nine was doing, if you remember. Um, sorry, it was originally 14, then it became nine. And I felt that balance kind of worked. So again, going back to our scorecard, well, we're now looking at pretty balanced nines again and I quite like that this one goes long par four short par four now I think those two work together and I think you occasionally find holes in pairs and one does what the other doesn't so nine dog legs ten is straight nine is long ten is short nine has a like at grade down low green punch bowly ten's going to have our high plateau green probably and they're almost like you treat them as polar opposites because that's going to give you some variety. It also meant I was able to bring 16T back to where it was. So we were somewhere like here. And it meant that I gained this back to back fives back that I really liked. So suddenly I'm feeling so much more happy about this because those two holes, I think, solve me a potential headache and can be a really good point in the routing. So that. Is pretty much where we finished on this routing i've taken 13 out a little bit more but actually we can push the t in a bit dog leg it a little bit more that changes some of the angles slightly but i think kind of a drive and pitch hole breaks up this nine really nicely we're still struggling with five five is going to be one where that'll be we're going to move the land a little bit because whilst there's a ravine here we can play god and at the moment i'm not getting as much from this as i would like it's got a really dramatic setting. There's a really good golf hole here. It's just not leaping out at me just yet. But I'm sure we will get there. And whether it's by kind of you know, making the green site a little bit more funky or extending the ravine, I don't really, probably not that much. I don't really mind changing the terrain. Um, I think we can get caught up in trying to find purely natural holes. And sometimes people would move land to make a really good hole. And the challenge is can you make those moves and make it indistinguishable from what you had beforehand? Like, can you make the artificial look natural? Um, so that would be more of what we're trying to do here. And short par fours, I tend to go through three or four iterations before I'm happy with them anyway. Um, we can now, if we want to, we could extend 13 green out. And in fact, push the whole 13th hole this way. So because four is gone way back when, well, we can now push this green out further 
and we might look at sight lines from three and go, you know what, that would be a great spot for a green. Could also, if I wanted to bring 14 back, make that even longer. Given that it's uphill, I probably won't, but there's options there. So this is where we've finished up with the routing. That doesn't mean to say it's going to change, not going to, well, doesn't mean to say it's going to change, stay exactly the same. But I think what this should hopefully show is why you don't just settle on something straight away. Because I now go through all of these holes and there are very few, if indeed anywhere I'm looking at and going, you know what, that doesn't fit or that's a weak hole that's going to let this down in a way that with the old nine, I felt that was a weak hole. This 15th, I felt was a weak hole. It's interesting because both of them would have gotten really good lighting. They just weren't working on land that I felt was particularly exciting. I feel like the closing stretch would have been let down a bit by 15. Whereas now you go from what I think will be blockbuster par three to blockbuster par five to really cool strategic par five slash bouncing in a fun approach off this little slope. Like There's a hollow here that I'm going to use, which works well, to short par three where we can put a ton of danger to long uphill par four that's going to be a challenge and we can bunker pretty heavily and takes us back to a clubhouse. I think that's a really strong finish to the round that when you chucked in this average short par four, felt that broke it up. And in the first episode, I talked about cadence. That's kind of what I look at. Um, the front nine, I now feel really happy with nine and ten. And I think those two work together so nicely because of actually nine is the sort of hole I love to build, like a long running ground game approach. And I think it will flesh out the first really nicely. And we can make those three holes work together. Well, four holes work together in tandem. Ten might be a bit difficult to put together in terms of there's no reason why this one should succeed where this one didn't. But I think the difference is with this one, you're going more side hill than you are straight uphill with this one. That was always the problem. It was just dead uphill, although there was a bit of movement towards the left. It was always a pure elevation change tee shot, um, which I don't tend to love. I then feel really solid about, really happy about 11 and 12. 12, I think, is going to be a great green and approach. Very downhill, bouncing the ball in. So there might be some changes, but this is where we've ultimately settled. Um, so coming back to our main four kind of criteria for routing, like what makes a really good routing? First one was always, are you using your key features to the maximum? I feel like we are. We've stuck with the core of this um, ravine usage. And actually, you'll notice those are the holes that haven't, whilst they've changed in order, they haven't really changed where they are on the ravine because I feel like that still holds up. Now, I might interrogate that a little bit more as we go, and I may switch it, but there's pretty good reasons why they are where they are. Um, and I really like that little loop from four to seven. We then talked about the next key one is balance. Well, we were looking constantly about path three directions, path five directions. They're all going in different ways. Uh, the path fives haven't really changed at all, so I'm pretty set on those. We were looking at kind of long versus short holes, and I feel those are now really balanced. So things like 12 being a long running approach, well, therefore 13, can we now have a short pitch? Way better. And then 14 is like a mid iron up into the sky. 15 is hitting an elevated three wood or something like that. I think you're asking for lots of different questions with that. Um, the next one was looking at variety. Well, we've moved between the flatter environment. We're still coming back now. And I'm happy we've wedged in two holes here. So we're coming back to that flatter area, beginning, middle and end. I think that works really nicely. We've got some cool transition holes that play off it. 12, back into it. 9 and 10, both play back into that flatter portion. Um, and 3 plays down as well. We're then looking at um, the final one was that cadence. And as I, as I said with the closing stretch, I think we've really hit that in a way that I want to. So you've got a couple of gentler opening holes before three takes you down, four takes you down, and then five, six, seven is eight are going to be more the wild holes before we get back up to the gentler land. So you can see you've got kind of a, a bit of a tempo to it of like more gentle holes, followed by wilder stuff, followed by coming back up for more gentle, followed by we go back down into this area, and then we come back out over 15, I'd say, will hopefully be the crescendo of the round, and then we get back up to the clubhouse. So those are kind of my key principles. And 
in terms of routing, I tend to spend, I might make some holes whilst I'm doing this, but only ever start building out the ones where I'm confident that's where they're going to be. But this is why I spend about, probably for a contest course, five, six days constantly scrutinizing and getting to know the plot that you've built. It's one thing building the plot and finding holes. It's not until you really spend the time digging into it and working out how things fit together that you really understand it. And bear in mind that real course architects would spend ages doing this and walking the land, getting to know it and working out how things fit together and that sequence. So I hope you've enjoyed and um, thank you for stopping along. I may do a few more videos on this course. We'll we'll see how it goes. Um, like I say, I think this is going to be the contest entry, but it might not. We'll see. Either way, hopefully you've enjoyed and see you again soon.